we are at uh, Buena Note on the set of the Goodfellas remake. Um, we're uh, waiting for Clinton Sparks to arrive. We're not sure if he's going to come through the front or come through the back. Um, but uh, four cops actually just walked through the front door. Which might, might be a regular occurrence here, but we're not too certain, to be honest. But uh, we'll keep you posted as uh, the events of the evening unfold. Can I stay with you tonight? Cause I don't think that I'm alright. I need to find a peace of mind. Cause I messed up just by design. Huh. <laughs> I'll do the intro, you chill. <laughs> this is Orrin Lefkowitz, aka Freelance Lot. And I'm here with DJ radio, TV personality, rapper, singer, songwriter. Cookie fanatic. Cookie monster. <laughs> mixtape. It's four in the morning, they brought me cookies <laughs> to the hotel. The Thanks, guys. The mixtape messiah himself. Nicely said. Clinton Sparks. Thank you very much. Clinton. High five for that one. Up yeah. top. Welcome to Montreal, my man. Thank you. you look like DJ Cassidy. Do you know who that is? I know Cassidy the rapper. DJ Cassidy from New York City. Look him up. You look like him. If you just put on one of those old... Those old, uh, I don't know, ice cream hats, ice cream man hats. Uh, All right, sorry. No, I mean, I'll look that up. I mean, but, you know, if he's not handsome, I'll be really upset. The response to Gold Rush, was it a better response than you thought? Because it it, it blew up pretty big on YouTube, at least. Yeah, I think that Gold Rush was, there's a couple things with that record. It did well. It was licensed on, like, eight or nine TV shows and movies, which is a win for me. Yeah. Um... On the charts, it didn't do extremely well. But I think for the, the couple reasons is one, the record made no sense um, to people because it's like, first of all, Macklemore and Two Chains on one record doesn't make any sense. Well, they're two of the hottest rappers. Yeah, but they don't. But they're different. And then them being on a rock sounding record doesn't make any sense. And then when you watch the video, you see like Tommy Lee and Tyrese. That uh, doesn't make any sense. But that's and like nasty. Yeah, but that's like, oh, that's the other video. Then yeah. I have two videos. Another one with Nick Swanson and, and Simon Rex, they nasty. But it's like, I think sometimes when you give something, when you give too much of something new to somebody, it's hard for them to swallow at first. You got to give them a little bit at a time. And I think that was maybe too much. And then the, the tempo of that song was 113. And me being a DJ, I understand. It was a hard record to mix with anything. Well, because it didn't sound like anything and it wasn't a tempo where you could even mix it with anything. Yeah. So, <coughs> pardon me, I'm sick by the way. Four in the morning, I came down to do an interview and I'm sick. This is the man right here. <coughs> but, um, yeah, so I think that's what happened with that record. But I think once you hear that in the full body of my whole EP, yeah. then you're going to really understand it. Like, oh, I see what he's doing. Right. Like, when you envision 2014, is this what it looks like? Yeah. <coughs> and it's funny because... I can predict everything in my life from business to even personal to relationships. I know exactly where we're going to be in two years. You keep acting like this is where we're going to be in two years. You know, if you don't act this way, this is where we're going to be in two years. You're a palm so, reader in a past life? No, but I just, it's a, again, it's just understanding people, demographics, cultures, understanding how people think, understanding people's dreams, fantasies, desires, insecures, fears, like just really honing in and understanding that. So, you know, it's probably my upbringing where I've been in a different neighborhood. I had an alcoholic father. I lived in a black neighborhood. I lived in a white neighborhood. And, you know, I just lived all over the place. And I just, I just pay attention. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You never went to university, from what I understand, right? No. I didn't even graduate high school. <laughs> yeah. I think that uh, oh, I was like 150 bucks or something. I think that I might, I think they only didn't give it to me because I owed, like, summer school money or something. I don't know. Whatever. Who was it public school? Yeah. But my question was going to be, if you did do university, do you think you would have been like a psychology major? 
is that what you think you would have wanted to study? Or now looking back, because you're talking about understanding. I don't know. People. I would have done research on how much money you could make with that. So yeah, I don't, I don't it's know not about answer. like the learning experience. It's about where it would lead to. No, because I can. I'm, I've already learned it. I didn't go to university. So and then anything I haven't learned, I can read a book. So um, even like even even when I was in, um, I did go to music school after high school. In three months into the program, because I'm not good in a whole classroom setting, I have to like sit with somebody and then I have to hear the same thing five times. So I didn't like it. So I said, "Man, the money I'm spending on this, I can just go buy myself equipment and teach myself, and actually have some benefit when the whole thing is over." <coughs> so I dropped out of there and I bought equipment and taught myself how to use a sampler and play the keys. And Were you on uh, turntables first, like real vinyl first, or do you go right to Serato? No, yeah, I was on real vinyl. No. Do you ever still play real vinyl? No. Man, I, I'm, I'm glad that's over. <laughs> I remember I paid fifteen hundred dollars one time to go from like Paris to Switzerland with my records. Right. And I was I, that was the day. How I many records did you have at the? Peak? I might have had four crates. And that that was the day. That was like two thousand five. Isn't it funny how how like such a short amount of time how like life and technology has changed? Two thousand five. Yeah. Two thousand five seems like it was yesterday. I was carrying crates of records. Now like I travel the world with my backpack and a laptop. In 2005, I was 12, so. Yeah, great. <laughs> Everything I do is strategic, all the businesses and things that I'm involved with because it gives me leverage and an angle to get other things that I need to do. I need to do a record for me. I'm gonna do television because I know you need to be on television. I'm gonna put you on television and do this record for me. Oh, I'm gonna do this over here, so I'm gonna put you on here on the front page of mix you know, you know what I mean? So it's just like any business that you know, uses leverage to, uh, to get things that they want. That's why I'm always doing five things at once, because they all help each other. As a DJ, though, you're one of the people that gets to tell others what to like. Yeah, of course. I mean, there was a rule of thumb in radio when I started that. I don't think of this rule, and I've never subscribed to it, but I know that radio overall, they had this rule of thumb that was like, uh, the listeners are stupid, they like what we tell them to like. I remember reading that in a book when I was younger. And I don't, again, I don't subscribe to that, and I don't think listeners are stupid, but... I do get that theory on radio, and it's like, you know, we're going to play these same 30 songs, and you're going to like them. And even if you don't like them, you're going to know them, and you're going to sing them, because we're going to drill them into your head. And that's how I got, came up with Get Familiar, because it was like, um, my tagline, my handle, Get Familiar, when I got on the radio, I was like, how do I do something original and different than everybody else? I sat in my bedroom, just started writing down different things, I wrote Get Familiar, I kept going back to it, and I was like, oh, that's perfect, I can tell you to get familiar, people can tell you to get familiar with me, and... I'm bringing that up to show that being consistent with something and repetitive ends up making people familiar with it and liking it. And when I first started Get Familiar in Boston on the radio, everybody hated it. So I'm like, get familiar, get familiar, get familiar. I'm like, man, shut up, enough with that, get familiar. My, my boss would call up and be like, don't play Get Familiar again or you're like, I'm gonna fire you. And I'm like, whatever. And I kept doing it, kept doing it, kept doing it. Yeah. After like two months, now I was known as Mr. Get Familiar. I'd walk down the street, people would be like, get familiar, you know what I mean? So it's, the art of repetitiveness works. You mean it's getting early. <laughs> was it 5 a.m.? No way. I need to go to, what is that place called, Exceptional? Yeah, Exceptional. Yeah, yeah. Expectations. Expectations. What time is that open, man? All right, you guys are taking me to Expectation yeah, after this. Right. Yeah, we're down. <laughs> um, if, hypothetical scenario, the world's about to end, no, the wor society is going to continue, but all the music that has been recorded in the world is about to be destroyed and disappear from the face of the earth. But you have the opportunity to save one album. Which album would you choose? Maybe Queen. Uh. I don't know, I love so many different albums. Weezer Pinkerton? Ooh, bold move. You guys know that? Yeah, I know that. Um, tired of sex? Yeah, so tired. Yeah. Um, I don't know, so many, that's, a hard, that's a hard thing. Um, maybe Queen's Greatest Hits. Mm -hmm. Just because I can't pick one Queen album. Yeah, could you pick one Queen song? Um, 
somebody to love. Yeah. That's dope. That's a, that's a beautiful song. Anyway, it's getting early. Yeah. I hope you got familiar over the course of this interview. The champion, as I said, the mixtape messiah, Clinton Sparks. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. Appreciate it. And you can get more familiar on Twitter.com at Clint Sparks, Facebook at Clint Sparks, and Instagram Clint Sparks, or ClintonSparks.com. Suckerfree.ca. Suckerfree.ca. But that shit, if this was a real show, it would be on the bottom of the screen. You'd already be able to see that. It, it'll be right And there. if it was a legit show, they'd post up what I just said on the screen at the same time so you can read for the hearing impaired. Right. <laughs> we'll have this whole thing subtitled and dubbed in every language. In French? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, this, I mean, if we're trying, not trying to get arrested by the Je m'appelle Clinton. Comment tell you <laughs> Hey, um, my, my EP Iconic Class comes out July 15th. Get familiar. Bye. Au revoir. Bonne soirée. Bonne nuit. Oh, thanks, man. Man, look at this guy. Wait, come on, camera, real quick. Look at this guy. What is his job? What is his title? AJ? What's AJ is a startup computer programming genius. He's but like, right now he's dressed like a waiter. Yeah, he's like the concierge. Like, he's a, just a great guy. Look at him. He's got his we, bow tie. We tell the story of our night tonight. But maybe <laughs> should story first. And he's such a proper gentleman. Yeah. All right. Thanks, AJ. So, um, yeah, so I get on the tour bus. So I never sang before in my life. And in my yeah. mind, I'm not a real singer.